So what we have here gonna completely change the game of my 3D printed car project. This is Hager's Reflex 2 resin 3D printer, but it's a bit different than the resin printers we used before and I will show you everything you need in this video and why this printer is a bit more expensive than the other ones we used. So this is the 3D printer itself and this is the resin tank which we call it VAT but this is a bit different which it will be connected with the printer and also this pulsing module which sends air and it, and it makes the 3D printed part to be released easily without breaking the support which we always have that problem either you have to put support more or if you make it less it will break it when it releases from the sheet all right next this is the curing station it's not only curing when it comes to hay gears cure station it's also a drying station as well so it will heat up the 3d printed part and then it will cure it but all these gonna happen automatically after printing it software knows what did you print and it will send a signal to the curing station and it will put the time for you so you don't have to worry about anything and speaking of timing hay gears resin are the same just like this the resin comes in these cartridges so they are like this and you will put that in the printer all right moving on this is the washing station the washing station is a bit interesting i haven't seen anything like this so this is the washing station and it comes with two buckets which the buckets are here is here so one of the buckets will be for washing and the other bucket will be for remaining alcohol so you're gonna stack these buckets on top of each other and then drain the alcohol without needing any extra bucket or a funnel so this is a good idea which i will show you everything you need in this video and we have something interesting which is this one this is hey gears ultra glaze clear g11.5 what it does we know after 3d printing clear material with the 3d printer after washing it with alcohol it will get foggy but with this product we're not gonna have this after washing and curing we're gonna put this on and it will stay clear like this all right let's talk about hay gears resins so the resin has specific code which each code means something so here we have pau20 which is general purpose of resins and here we have pat10 and the t at the end stands for transparent and here we have PAH270 which the H stands for high temperature and the list goes on. So S is going to be for standard, P for precision if you are printing miniature, F for flexible and W for water washable. And the resins comes in bottle or cartridges like this but keep in mind you can't use other resins for this printer. Alright let's get these down and unbox the 3D printer itself. We have two big bags of silicon discant, which I'm not gonna throw it away. I will put it in the AMS, which it will be very useful. All right, let's open it and see what we have. The hinging mechanism looks very good and you can hold it wherever you want. And it goes all the way to the back. So it will be very easy to take the plate out. So let's take these foams out. We have some stuff here, which is the plate here and the bat. And these are all secured with a tape. All right, so the installation was so easy. You just have to take these films out and the films and that's it. Put the plate back. Now it's ready for printing. And I saw these rods, it's heavy duty and the body also heavy duty like hard plastic. You can't see any cheap material with that. And the vat is big. So the build volume is 230 by 144 by 230 millimeter with amber screen, which it will give accurate exposure on every spot on the screen. Now we can unbox the washing station and put it here and then the curing station. All right, so here is the washing station and here are the buckets. So let's take these out. This will be on this. Okay, now we can unbox this. 
Nice, we also have a brush, cable. All right, the washing station is done. This washing station is a bit different than the other ones. This one, you will put it like this and it will turn like this and it will make splashing with that alcohol and clean everything. I haven't seen anything like this, but we will see how it's gonna work. And I was worried about if you have small parts and is it gonna break it or not while splashing like this, we will see. So this washing station is a bit different than the other ones. You're not gonna have any contact with alcohol after finishing this. So let's say you put your piece here and it cleans it. And after that, you put this on the other bucket and open this valve, which it will drain all that alcohol into the second bucket. So after that, what you left here is only the 3D printed part. And if we look here, here you have a valve. And when you put that bucket on, it will press that valve and it will drain the alcohol, which is really smart idea. Okay, next the curing station. All right, next we have pulse releasing module, which it will be connected with the VAT. This is a normal VAT that's on the printer, but the pulsing VAT is different, which we have it too. And now we can unbox this and put it on the side. All right, here is the final box, which is the VAT for pulse and releasing. We're gonna unbox this also, and then we will start printing. I'm happy to announce this video is sponsored by PCBWay. If you are thinking on custom design and need PCB board, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, or 3D printing, they can do all of that. Link in the video description box below. Back to the video. So what I got here is the best resin 3D printing station. You got your 3D printer here with the help of pulse and releasing module beside it. After printing, you will put it in washing machine. It will wash all the residue of that resin. After that, you will put it in curing station and then that printed part will be ready to use. This setup will be a bit expensive, but they thought about everything because the printer module washing station and curing station all be connected together so when you're printing something it already knows how much time it needs for drying for washing and everything with this setup everything being dialed correctly so you don't need to do any testing that's why you can't use any aftermarket resin it has to be Hager's resin. So if you don't have time for test printing and exposure setting, this setup will be great for you. Because when you're designing and you just wanna print it, see how that design works, you don't have time to tweak the setting or anything. You just want that part to be in your hand and test it. And that's what we have here. All right, now the printer, washing station, and curing station all connected through the app. And when you connect it through the app, it will be connected on the slicer as well because it's on the same email.
All right, I already washed the three D printer and the washing machine doing its thing. So now we're gonna load the transparent one, which is Pad 10, into the three D printer and go to the slicing software. So the two bucket method was useful. All the broken support stayed here after draining it into the other bucket. All right, before putting it in a curing station, I just wanted to show you. Even I can see the blade, the knot, the quality is very high. Now we're gonna put it in curing station and see how tough it is. And here is the filter, it came out really good. And I'm really excited about these arms, how it's gonna last and we're gonna test it later. But even when I break the support, it was so good and I didn't break anything. These are done. The reason I printed this because I was printing it in ABS or PLA and if you look at here it's a D shape and when I was doing accelerating it was rounding up but with this resin material we're not gonna have any problem and the holes on that rotor look so clear. Alright on to the next one. I had a problem with the nuts when I was doing a hard turn it, it was snapping these from here because I was printing it like this and with FTM printing we know it will be a weak point but with this one I hope it's not gonna be a problem and we will test it and we will put some force on that wheel to see if it's gonna snap or not. The block looks nice but I saw some of that scratches and the reason for that it's because of that washing station and it will hit all the parts to each other and I was thinking to 3d print something to hold these and doesn't hit each other. So we will do something like this in the future but the quality looks very nice and the last one is the turbo I can see all the details on this turbo so now we're gonna print the glasses and this is gonna be for the next video which I'm building a truck with real V8 engine all right now we're gonna put these on the Supra and do some burnout see if it's gonna snap over here or not these gonna be the arms so we will see if it can hold the weight of the engine if you haven't seen the part one I will put it here these are done and it's cured and look at that quality and I made an extra one so I can test it for breaking and see how strong it is. I'm gonna try it with hand and see this is the thinnest part. We don't have any force here but I'm gonna test out and break it. The only problem we had is this one that D shape was rounding up with the torque of the motor. And now I'll try to break it. I don't think with hand it will be possible because It's bending a bit but still yeah I can bend it but still I can't break it and I think it goes back yeah it goes back but it has that toughness it doesn't break and now I will try with plier and see how tough it is and I had problems with resin printing before because with the resin printing it gets brittle even more after curing but with this one you still have that ABS like thing in it. I'm really impressed about the toughness of this material. So now we're gonna put them on and test it out. All right, now the glasses are done and I washed it in washing station. Now we're gonna put it in curing station and check it out. All 
right, the prints are done. We can see it got hazy a bit, which that's normal after curing. So what I'm gonna do now, I will sand these areas, which it was from the support. So I will use a sandpaper and sand these down, and then I will use Hager's gloss glaze, which it will give it a glass look after applying this. All the glasses are done. I had to leave it for longer time because it was still sticky for touching and I didn't want to have any fingerprint on it. any problem with the nut and even the rotor that D shape area didn't round up with all these forces and we lost the wing and I break it here I'm happy I didn't had any other issues with the fender but here it's strong because it's very close to the chassis and this was the big point but yeah I can replace that and I'm thinking to print all the panels with the same material that I printed the rotor and the nut and it will be very good for handling these hits all right, let's talk about this setup of hay gears, printer, washing station, and curing station. We're gonna start with the printer. It prints great, we saw the quality, and the material is great and tough, and didn't have any problem with it. Moving on to the pulsing and releasing module. It didn't connect first time when I plugged in, and I had to take this rubber out, which I didn't find any instruction for that. So if you are buying the pulsing release module, and you have a problem with connecting, take this rubber out, and you will be good to go. Washing station, I didn't have any problem with that, except hitting the printed part with each other. But if they put a mesh like this, and the part not gonna be hitting each other. And the two bucket method works great, and I like the idea. Curing station works perfect, and I have nothing about it. And I will be doing more testing with Hager's gloss glaze, and I will keep you an update on that. I will make sure to put all the products in the video description box below so you can check it out. More video will be coming soon for the V8 engine and also the Subra project. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.